Ah, in this uh, tutorial, I will give an overview of how you can use uh, and create and implement uh, transfer functions with Python. Uh, first, I will introduce some of my Python resources. I have made a free textbook called Python for Control Engineering. You can find this textbook at my webpage at this uh, location. In addition, I have made other Python resources. Python for Programming is a beginner's textbook in Python programming, Python for Science and Engineering, and Python for Control Engineering, and Python for Software Development. These textbooks, lot of, lots of additional resource, resources like videos, examples, etc. are found on my webpage at this location. In this video, uh, I will introduce uh, a basic control system. And the main topic is, of course, uh, transfer functions. I will give an overview of transfer functions in general and how you can implement them and use them in Python. I will introduce uh, the topics uh, how to perform a step response on transfer functions. I will give an overview of poles and zeros regarding transfer functions. And I will provide lots of Python examples. In this tutorial, I will use two different Python uh, libraries. First, I will use this SciPy library. And in addition, I will also use the so-called Python control systems library, which is a more specific library um, that deals with the control systems. So here you see an overview of a basic uh, or a typical control system. You have a process and the main purpose with the control system is to control this process. So it stays on a, a reference value. It could be a level in uh, a water tank. Typically you want to have the, the level at a certain level. Um, it could be, let's say, two meters. It could be uh, that you want to have the process uh, on a temperature. Uh, let's say you want to have the process running on 25 degrees Celsius or something, or a certain level of pressure, etc. So the process could be everything. It could be a level tank. It could be an, uh, a boat, a car. It could be a, any kind of an industrial process or other types of uh, processes. And typically you need to have a controller in order to control this process. So the, pro uh, the controller um, calculates a control signal that it sends to the process via some actuators. Uh, an actuator could be a pump, uh, etc. And then this actuator acts on the process. And then typically we have one or more sensor or measurements that measure, uh, let's say, the level, uh, the temperature, the pressure, etc. In, in, inside the process. And then typically we need to have some filtering because the signals could be uh, influenced with some um, uh, noise. And typically we, we could use a low pass filter in order to reduce or remove the noise from the signal. And then we have the reference signal, which is the wanted value that you want the process to stay on. And then based on the reference value minus the measured control uh, the process value we get the error between the reference value and the measured value and that the, that um, error is used by the controller in order to calculate a new control signal to the process so this goes into a loop um, and this this um, loop here is called a feedback loop so it goes back from the process and a new contro uh, control signal is calculated and then it it will be applied to the process and then the process will uh, react on that signal and we can read a new value and so it goes on so we have r which is the reference value or the set point or a set value. 
different notations are used in different uh, textbooks. We have y, which is the measurement value, sometimes also called mv, measurement value, or process value, pv. And we have this e, which is the error between the reference value and the measurement value. So e equals to r minus y. And then we could have v, which is a disturbance. And this typically this th these kind of distur disturbances makes it more complicated to control the process. And then finally we have the control signal uh, u that comes from the controller and act on the process. Uh, here you can see a simplified contro uh, control system with only the process and the controller. So all uh, control system needs to have these two uh, components, namely the process and the controller that controls the process. And as mentioned, the purpose with the controller is to make sure that the, the process stays on a desired level. It could be a level in a, in a liquid tank or water tank or the temperature at a specific level for instance, 30 degrees Celsius. And typically we will use a PID controller to control the process. So the PID controller is the most used uh, controller today. And that controller has three uh, tuning parameters, namely KP, TI, the integral time, and TD, the derivative time. So all the blocks in the control system can be described by a transfer function. So let's uh, give an overview of uh, transfer functions in general. So a transfer function are a model form based on the Laplace transform. And transfer functions are very useful when analysis and design of linear dynamic uh, systems. So a general transfer function uh, is on this general form. So we typically use uh, the letter H for transfer function and S is the Laplace operator. And then we have typically the, the input and the output. So basically this is a transfer function and um, on a general form you can set or describe a transfer function like this. So it typically consists of some numerators and some denumerators. And uh, the numerators of the transfer function uh, So basically the numerators of the transfer function model describe the location of the zeros of the system while the denominators of the transfer function model describe the location of the poles of the system. I will come back in more uh, details about uh, poles and zeros. Here you see some examples of some basic transfer functions. Here we have a first order system. Here we have a first order system with a time delay. So this is the time delay part. Here we have a first order system with an integrator. This is the integrator part. Uh, this is a second order system. So this is just some examples we will uh, implement in Python later. Here you see some, um, some of the same uh, transfer functions on how we can implement them in Python. I will uh, provide more details regarding the Python uh, program later, but uh, typically um, you uh, need to define the numerator and the denumerator den and put it into a uh, numpy array and then you use one of the built-in functions either in this uh, control uh, library or in the scipy library and both has uh, functions for defining a transfer function in the control library the function is named tf for transfer function and the input to these functions are the numerator and the denumerator de So basically, um, this is how you define a transfer function in Python. So in this tutorial, we will focus on the following transfer functions. A first order transfer function, uh, and on general form, it can be written like this, uh, where k is the gain of the transfer function and t is the time constant. And here you see a transfer function of a time delay 
And if you combine a first order transfer function and a time delay transfer function, you get a first order transfer function with a time delay, which uh, looks like this. So k is the gain, t is the time constant, and this is the time delay in seconds. Here you see a transfer function of an integrator. Here you see a transfer function of a second order system. It can be written in different ways. So this is one way to write a second order transfer function. This is another way to write a second order transfer function. So in this case, we have two time constants, t1 and t2. So if you go back to our control system, we have transfer functions for each of these parts. We have a transfer function for the process. We may have a transfer function for a sensor, a transfer function for the low pass filter, a transfer function for the controller. We may have a transfer function for the actuators, etc. Uh, next, let's provide some um, Python examples. So as mentioned earlier, we will use two different Python libraries, uh, namely the scipy or the scipy.signal submodule of the scipy library. This, the scipy library is included with Anaconda distribution. So if you have uh, installed Python through the Anaconda distribution, you have all the, the, the scipy library installed. Uh, this scipy.signal um, module has limited functions and features for control systems, but it has some basic functions for implementing uh, transfer functions, um, step response, body diagrams, etc. While the Python control systems library uh, has more features for um, control applications, uh, later in this tutorial I will just refer it to as the control library. For those who are familiar and used uh, MATLAB control system toolbox earlier, it has almost the same features as this uh, toolbox. Uh, this library is not installed by default with the Anaconda distribution, so typically you need to install it manually, but it's quite easy to install it. You just type pip install control and then you have installed this library. So let's uh, start with some basic Python examples using this scipy.signal module of the scipy library. Uh, so the scipy.signal uh, contains the signal processing functions. Uh, it also uh, included in Anaconda distribution. So if you have Anaconda distribution, install Python uh, through the Anaconda distribution, you should already have this scipy library installed. Um, if you need to read uh, more and find more um, information about the scipy.signal, just open this URL and then you will find a detailed description of all the functions uh, for this uh, module. Uh, here you see a basic example. So this is a first order transfer function. And here you see the code for implementing this transfer function using this scipy.signal uh, module of the scipy library. So we need to import this scipy module. Then we, as mentioned earlier, we need to define the transfer function by implementing or defining the numerator using a numpy array. So this line of code um, define the numerator while this line of code uh, define the denumerator of the transfer function. And then in the scipy signal, uh, we can use the function called transfer function in order to define the transfer function. And the input to this function is the numerator and the denumerator. And we can print the function, the transfer function. We can also perform a step response, and then later we can plot it. So let's implement this uh, Python example using our uh, spider editor. So I will use the spider editor. The spider editor is part of the Anaconda distribution, but you can use any kind of, spy, uh, any kind of uh, Python editor. 
but let's start uh, creating uh, the Python code for this transfer function. So we need to start import uh, the numpy. As numpy like this, we need to import um, the scipy library and dot signal and you just create an alias you can call it signal like this then we can start uh, defining the transfer function we need to uh, define the numerator and then we use the numpy array feature and then we define the numerator like this so the numerator was uh, 2, or the gain was uh, 2, but a better approach is just to set uh, the gain on top here and set it equals to 2, like this, and then replace 2 with the, with the k. Then you can easily change this value on top of the, your program. So this is the um, uh, numerator. course we need to have a equal sign here so this is the numerator let's create the denumerator equals to numpy array like this and then we have this time constant t which was equal to 3 in this example and then we just set it t comma on like this. So this is the denumerator. Then we can define the transfer function h equal to signal dot transfer function like this and the input to this function is the numerator and the denumerator like this then you can print it just using the print command and then we can run the application clicking on this run button and then you see um, the transfer function has been uh, defined then we can uh, perform a step response then we can use one of the other built-in functions in this uh, scipy library and there is a function called step which provides the step response of this transfer function and the input is just the transfer function but this function uh, doesn't uh, plot uh, the step response it just gives uh, two arrays in return, an array for the t values and an array for the for the y values. So then we need to use, for instance, the matplotlib in order to plot the function. So we need to import the matplotlib uh, dot pyplot as plt or something. Then we can use just plt dot plot like this, and the input to this function will be then the t array and the y array like this. So now we can just run our application. And we will get the following plot. So this is actually the step response of this transfer function we have defined here. So basically this is how you use the, sci <coughs> the scipy library in order to define a transfer function and you can plot the step response of this system. So as you noticed when we use this um, print command then we got the following result in the console window and here you have uh, in the transfer function we define we have two here and three here but here we have 0 0.66667 and 1 comma 0 0.3223 etc 
But actually this, these are the two same transfer functions, but they are just presented in two different ways. So if you just divide by three on each um, part here, like this, then we will get the following transfer function. So this transfer function and this transfer function are the same transfer function, but we have just divided by three in each part. And in is it, it, it is this format that is presented in uh, in the console window in, in Python. Next I will introduce the Python control systems library. So this is an additional uh, Python library. Uh, and this uh, package or, or um, library uh, implements basic operations fun for analysis and design of uh, control systems. If you are already a MATLAB user, the features and functions in this Python control system library is very similar to the MATLAB uh, uh, control system toolbox. If you uh, want to have more information about this library, you can take a closer look at their homepage and you find lots of uh, additional documentation and examples on this uh, web page. Um, while this uh, SciPy is part of the Anaconda distribution, and if you have installed Python through the Anaconda distribution, you didn't need to install SciPy, but this Python control system library is not part of um, Anaconda, so you need to install it manually. But it's quite easy to install, you just use the pip install uh, control uh, command. And if you have uh, inst already installed Python through the Anaconda distribution, you just use the Anaconda prompt and type pip install control and then you have this Python library installed. So in Windows you just go to search and type Anaconda and then this Anaconda prompt popped up, pops up and here you can just type pip install control and then this Python library will be installed. That's uh, how easy to install this um, Python library. So now we are ready to use uh, this uh, Python library in, inside your Python editor. Um, in this tutorial, I will use this, um, uh, this spider editor, um, which is part of the Anaconda distribution. Here you see an overview of some of the functions in this Python control systems library. You have the TF function for creating transfer functions. You have the SS for creating state space models. Uh, you can convert to a discrete uh, system using the uh, C2D function. You can uh, transform um, between a transfer function and a state space model and vice versa using these functions. And typically when dealing with transfer function, you need to use this serious parallel feedback functions, etc. If you have a transfer function with uh, a time delay, typically you need to use this uh, PADE function, which implements the PADE appro approximation used when you have transfer functions with the time delay. In addition, you have different functions for uh, model simulation, like this step underscore response, LSIM function. You have fun different functions for stability analysis, in addition to these uh, simulation functions, you, have, you can use the poll function to find the poles of the system and to find the stability mar uh, margin of the system, you can use the margin function, etc. So let's start with some basic uh, Python examples where we use this Python control systems library. So let's start uh, with this uh, basic example. This is the same transfer function that we used previously and in the previous one of the previous examples we imp implemented this transfer function using the scipy library here we will use this um, python control systems library and the code is uh, very similar uh, instead of the scipy you need to import the control um, library this is python control systems library in addition i will use numpy and the matplotlib and in order to create the transfer functions, we need to create a numerator 
using the NumPy array and a denumerator uh, like this. And then we can use the control.tf function in order to create the transfer function. And then if you want to have a step response, we can use the control.step underscore uh, response uh, function in order to perform a step response. So let's go to our uh, spider editor in order to implement this Python example. So here you see the previous examples where we used SciPy. And here you see the similar example using this uh, Python control systems library. Um, so the only difference is that we use this tf function instead. And instead of um, this signal.step, we use the control dot step underscore response uh, function, which is part of this uh, control library. So let's just run this application, clicking the run button. And as you see, the transfer function has been uh, implemented or created. And I'm just printing it to the console window uh, like this. And also here you see the step response. In addition, we can also type H here in the console window. And you see the transfer function will pop up with a, a little bit a better layout. It looks more like you write it on pen and paper. While uh, this print function, uh, print is print the transfer function like this. But if you just type the name of the transfer function, it will be presented like this. So basically, this is how you create a transfer function using this uh, Python control system library. I will also present an alternative way to implement the transfer function. So here we used uh, an NumPy array in order to define the numerator and the denumerator of the transfer function. In this example, I have used uh, another feature of this uh, control library you just type and use the s operator uh, directly the s operator is this laplace operator so you just set s equals to control dot transfer function dot s and by uh, doing this you can use this s directly when specifying the transfer function so then you can specify the transfer function directly uh, like this and this is very similar to how you do it on paper so this is the same transfer function as we implemented here using this uh, NumPy, uh, NumPy uh, array feature. And then we can use the same functions as previously uh, in order to perform step response, etc. So let's just run this example. And as you see, you get the same result, the same step response, and you get the same transfer function and you can also type here just the name of the transfer function and then it will pop up here in the console window so if you prefer this syntax or this syntax that's up to you uh, at least now you have the option to choose between these two alternatives So now we have implemented a uh, what we call the first order transfer function in Python in two different ways using this uh, NumPy array feature and then this more direct method where we just define this S operator and use that directly when implementing the transfer function. Uh, let's see how we can implement a so-called second order transfer function. So here we have implemented this second order transfer function using this NumPy array uh, feature with a numerator and a de denumerator and you can run it. And here you see uh, the step response for this uh, system. And here you see the alternative where we use this S operator directly and then the transfer function will uh, look like this. And when uh, running it, of course, we will get the same result. And here you see uh, the transfer function in the console window. You can also type H like this. 
So now we have we know the basics about transfer functions and how we can implement them in uh, Python using either the SciPy library or this um, control uh, library. Let's take uh, it to the next step and introduce different types of transfer functions. We have already implemented a first order transfer functions, uh, but we have other types of transfer functions. We have an integrator, we have time delay, we have a first order transfer function with, with time, <coughs> time delay, and we have second order transfer functions. So these are the typically the most um, used uh, types of uh, transfer functions. So let's go through these different types in more detail. So let's start with the first order transfer function. So here you see a general first order uh, transfer function and it gives it, it is given on this general form where we have k which is the gain of this transfer function and then we have t which is the time constant so this is the first order transfer function in in the laplace plane where s is the laplace operator and we can solve this um, transfer function and convert it to the time domain using uh, inverse Laplace, Laplace and then we will get the following uh, solution um, where y of t equals to k again multiplied with u and u in this case is the a step response of the control signal which is the input to the transfer function then multiply with 1 minus e up in minus t divided by t where t is the time constant of the system. So here you see um, the step response of such a uh, first order uh, transfer function. So this is the first order transfer function and in, in the time plane you get the following equation and if you plot this equation you will get this typical behavior of the step response of a first order system. Uh, typically after 63% of the total response of the system then you have this uh, time constant. And in steady state the total uh, response will be k multiply with u where u is this uh, step in the input signal in the control signal. So why is uh, that is, uh, time constant equal to 63% of this uh, total uh, response of the system? Well, it's uh, we have this uh, first order transfer function and in the time domain we have this equation and if in this equation we set t equals the time equals to upper t in the, in this case this time constant and we get the following we get this will be equal to uh, 0 0.63 times ku so this that's why we um, refer to this time constant as the t63 percent of this total response. So this means that the step response has reached 63% uh, uh, of the total response after t seconds in this case. So that's why we call it um, the 63% uh, time constant and then also this makes it easy uh, to find uh, the transfer function from a first order system uh, based on if you have some logged data from from the real system and that real system is a first order system then we can just go to 63 percent of the total response and then we can find easily find the time constant based on this uh, plot and also we can find the gain of this system by if we know what um, st uh, step or, or what what the control signal on the input was, assuming uh, uh, 
Uh, we, we just uh, perform a basic step response, then u will be equal to 1, and then the total response here will be just k. So then, just by reading this value from the plot, we can easily find the gain of the, of the system. So for uh, first order systems, you have these two parameters, k, the gain, and t, the time constant. So let's see what's uh, happening when we have this uh, transfer function. In this case, uh, gain is uh, 10, and it will be constant, but we will change the time constant. So in this uh, basic simulation, uh, we will try with different values for the time constant. So let's implement this Python uh, example in our uh, spider editor. So this example is uh, very similar to previous examples. We just have a value for k, and in addition to uh, we have values for t, but no, uh, the t is not constant. We have we tr we'll try with different values. First, with uh, t equal the time constant equals to five, then t equals to ten, thirty, and fifty, and all using the same k, and then we. Uh, implement the transfer uh, function inside a for loop. We will first create the transfer function where t equals to 5 and then uh, find the step response. And then in the next iteration, we use t equals to 10, create and plot the st uh, step response. Then we use t equals to 30, we define and plot the step response inside the for loop. And then finally, with t equals to 50. Let's see the results of this simulation. And as you see here, we have simulated and plotted the step response for a first order transfer function, where k equals to 10 in this example. And then we have four plots, the blue, uh, where we have t, the time constant equals to five, and this orange, we used t equals to 10, and in the green, we used t equals to 30, and then finally, the red line, we used t equals to 50. So then you see, when the t becomes larger, so this is the smallest t, bigger, bigger, and bigger, then you see uh, um, the response of the system becomes slower when t increases. So the blue one has a very fast response, the orange one has a little bit slower, the green one is even slower, and finally the red one is the slowest of those four uh, transfer functions. So this means larger t, slower system, smaller t, faster system. So in this example, uh, k was uh, constant, and we changed the t, the, uh, the sorry, the gain k was uh, constant, and then we changed the t, the time constant. So let's try the opposite. We keep the t, the time constant, uh, constant, and set it equals to 10, and then we change the gain of the first order system. First we use k equals to 1, and then we implement and plot the step response inside this for loop. Then we change k to 3, then to 5, and then to 10. Let's just run this uh, simulation. So here we get also here four different uh, plots. The red one is when k equals to 1. Uh, sorry. Uh, so here you see these four uh, plots, and then the blue one is uh, this one. Here we have set k equals to 1. The orange one, we have set k equals to 3. And the green one, we have set k equal to 5. And finally, the red one, we have set k equals to 10. So then, um, the only difference here is the, uh, the steady state response. Um, this means um, this k only influence 
uh, the value of the steady state. So uh, since uh, the, the gain in the blue one is one, then the steady and we just perform a step response. This means that the input signal u is uh, set to one. So when k equals to one, the steady state response will be one since u equals to one and k equals to three. And the steady state response will be three and k equals to five. The steady state response value will be five. And finally, when k equals to 10, the steady state response value will be 10. So this is how uh, different values of k influences a uh, first order dynamic system. Next, I will introduce the integrator. So here you see the general uh, transfer function for an integrator. It has uh, k, which is the gain, divided by s. So this is the transfer function for an integrator. And here you see a typical uh, example of an integrator, typically a water tank or liquid tank or a bucket of water or whatever is an integrator. So, so uh, as long as there is no flow out of the system and then just fill in water or other liquid, you will just fill out, fill up uh, this um, this tank of uh, water or liquid. And also in, uh, so this is the transfer function in the Laplace uh, domain uh, using the S operator. In the time domain, we will get the following equation. So if you solve um, the transfer function using uh, inverse Laplace, we will end up with, with the following uh, equation in, uh, in the time domain where y of t equals to k multiplied with u on the t. Where k is the gain of the integrator and u is the, is the step u of the input signal. Uh, so let's uh, implement this integrator in uh, Python. So here uh, you see uh, the, one of the previous examples where we have implemented a first order system where we have k and t. And then we have the step response for this first order system uh, like this. While here I have implemented this integrator and then we have this, just this k. So this is will be the numerator and then the denumerator will be implemented like this. So this one for the integrator and then just zero in this location. So let's just run this uh, application. So Basically, an uh, integrator is just a straight line uh, like this. Let's change this uh, gain to, to 1 like this. You can change it to 5 like this. So this is when k equals to 1. Here we have k equals to 5. We can change it to 10. Run it once more. Open the plot. So the green one is k equals to 10. And as you see, larger k, um, the faster uh, will uh, the step response be for this integrator. So basically that's an uh, integrator and it's easy to implement it in Python. Next, I will introduce the time delay. So here you see uh, the general transfer function for time delay, which is E up in minus Ts, where this um, T here or tau is the length of the time delay. And here in the bottom you see a first order transfer function with time delay. So this is the first order part, and then this is the time delay part. So here you see the uh, step response of this uh, first, uh, sorry, this uh, time delay uh, transfer function. So here we have um, the time delay of this this value, this tau. Then, if we perform a step response, uh, meaning we just set the input signal to to one. 
then it will this will not uh, the time uh, response will not start to react before this before this uh, time delay period has finished so assume you have a time delay of 5 seconds then it will go to zero from 0 seconds to 5 seconds and then suddenly it will uh, react and goes to to one like this so basically that's the step response for this time delay uh, this uh, transfer function is doesn't consist of uh, a numerator and a denumerator so typically when we implement such a transfer function in a programming language like python etc we need to use some kind of an uh, approximation and in this tutorial i will introduce the pade approximation this is probably the most used approximation for implementing a time delay so basically the transfer function for a time delay is uh, like this but typically we need to substitute this form with an approximation uh, like this. So then we will get a more familiar transfer function with a numerator and a denumerator. And then we can set different order of the approximation. Let's assume we set the order to one, a first order PADE approximation, then we will have this following transfer function for the first order approximation. For a second order uh, PADE approximation, we will have a second order transfer function with a numerator and a denumerator like this. And then we can e increase uh, the order of this uh, approximation, but typically we shouldn't have the order of the approximation shouldn't be too small, but it also shouldn't be too too large, because then we will get a very complicated expression of this uh, transfer fun uh, function. So let's see how we can implement this PADE appro approximation in Python. So here you see uh, the Python code for a given example of this transfer function. So in uh, Python we use this uh, PADE function. So here we see the, uh, the PADE function which is part of this uh, control uh, library. And input to this function is the time delay, in this case tau, uh, which is set to 2 in this example. And the second input is n, which is the approximation order. In this case, I have set n equals to 5. And uh, this uh, PADE appro approximation function generates a numerator and a denumerator. And in order to create a transfer function for this uh, PADE function, we use this TF transfer function function with the inputs from this PADE function. So let's open the spider editor and implement this application in in spider. So now I'm in spider and here is the python code for this uh, example. I set the time delay to 2 seconds and the approxima uh, approximation order to 5. And then I will plot the step response as in previous examples. So let's just run this example. And as you see here you see the step response of this time uh, delay transfer function using this PADE approximation. Where the, you can clearly see that the time delay is 2 seconds in this case. Let's just change the order of the appro approximation. Let's start with uh, 1. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is will be a PADE approximation, approximation of first order. Let's change it to 2. And we'll have, uh, have like this. 3. 4. And you see if uh, in the beginning here on this lower approximation order, 
there are a lots of lots of things happening here in the beginning so the higher the approximation order is and the better uh, the result will be but typically uh, you shouldn't use too large approximation order because as you see here i'm printing the transfer function it becomes very complex so for a first order transfer function uh, approximation uh, here you will see the the um, appro approximation of first order it's uh, quite simple and i change it to two it will be like this but changing to 10 it be, we, will become very complicated and it will also be time consuming uh, to do calculations with such a advanced or complex transfer function um, here in this example i have um, simulated different uh, orders of the approximation i have used uh, I use the simulation inside a for loop, so then I first set order to 1, 2, 3, 5, and 10, and then running, I will get uh, this, this result. Uh, let's just run it once more. So here you see I will get um, the step response of this PADE approximation for different orders of the approximation. So, uh, so only how this transfer function, uh, time delay transfer function is not so relevant. So typically you have a transfer function like this, where, is a, where you have a first order uh, transfer function with a time delay. So then where k is the gain of the process, t is the time constant, and then tau will be the time delay in seconds. So this is a first order transfer function with time delay. And here uh, you see the step response for such a system. So in the beginning here, we will have this uh, time delay where the response is equal to zero after a step response. And then after two number of seconds, we will have this familiar first order response. So this is a typical uh, step response for a first order system with a time delay. So let's implement uh, such a system in uh, Python. So here we have a basic example. We have a first order transfer function with a time delay. Where the gain is three, time constant is four seconds, and the time delay is two seconds. And then we will typically get this step response where we have two seconds of time delay here in the beginning and then we have this standard first order uh, step response. So let's implement this application in Python. So here you see the Python example for this first order transfer function with a time delay. So let's start with the um, uh, ordinary first order system where we have a gain and a time constant. And then we use this NumPy array for creating the numerator and denumerator and then we use the tf function in order to create the transfer function so this piece of code is similar from previous example where we created a first order transfer function and then we have this piece of code where we created uh, the transfer function for the time delay using this PADE approximation and then we use this tf as this uh, approximation numerator and denumerator as an input. So now we have two transfer functions. One, h1, is the transfer function for a basic first order system, while this second transfer function is the transfer function for the time delay. And then we use this function called series in order to combine the first order transfer function with the 
transfer function for the Padilla approximation. So then we'll, we'll have this total transfer function, which is the fir uh, first order transfer function, plus the time a delay transfer function. So let's just, and finally we use the step response in order to find the step response. So let's just run this example. And as you see, we get this standard step response where we here in the beginning see clearly the time delay before the system starts to react. You can change the toe to let's say five seconds and run it. Now you see we clearly have a time delay on five seconds in the beginning. We can change it here. We set the order of the approximation. We have now used five. Let's change it to 10. Then the result will be like this. So this is how you implement a standard transfer function, first order transfer function with a time delay in Python. So that's all about uh, transfer functions and how you can implement transfer functions in Python. If you want to learn more about Python, take a closer look at some of my other uh, Python resources. I have made different textbooks, lots of videos, etc. And these the videos are available on YouTube, while the textbooks, examples, etc. are available on my webpage. So that's all. So good luck with your Python programming. Thank you.